Welcome back, everybody here in Twitch chat and also everybody on YouTube, if you're watching this video later on over there, for our part five of our uh, War of the Spark standard set review. So far, we've already gone through all the rest of the colors, white, blue, black, and red. And now we are on to green with just multicolor and artifacts and colorless cards afterwards. So uh, we are giving every single card here a letter grade rating, uh, A through F, kind of based on the US uh, grade scale. Um, if you'd like to see the, the exact scale, you can type either exclamation point grade here in chat. Ah, stop. Or if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can go on down to the uh, information and see it there. So I've been I've read it for some of the earlier videos, but I'm going to um, just continue on and not go through and reread <coughs> re the letter scales again. <laughs> All non cat cat cards get an F, says Hawkeye. Okay. So first up, we have um, Arboreal Grazer. This is green for an O3 with reach. It says when Arboreal Grazer enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. So I'm not exactly sure what to think of this card. I was pretty skeptical when I first read it, you know, just thinking that, okay, we, we get to put a land from an extra land into play, but like, is this O3 reach like actually going to like really do anything for us? Um, <clears throat> Sorry, Hawkeye. There you go. Now we can see you. Um, so yeah, is this O3 Reach really going to do anything for us? And we don't get to like draw any more cards, so like, you sh sure, we get the extra land drop immediately, but then we're going to run out of lands. But kind of thinking about it, I actually kind of, you know, thinking about it more, I kind of like it. I think it can work well with some, some other cards. Yeah, it's a nice blocker. Um, I think it, it works pretty well with the Ajani's. Um, either one of the four mana Johnnies of like helps us helps you get your Johnnies out faster, and then like if you're playing a Johnny adversary tyrants, the white Johnny, you can put a, a counter on this thing to make it even a bigger blocker, and so on. <clears throat> or the um, the green white Johnny, you know, you can mine, you know, minusing puts counters on this and other things, but you know, it's it's a good defensive card there. I think where where it will really shine is with like Neoform. Um, I think if, if there's going to be a, a Neoform deck or maybe even a Prime Speaker Vanifar, same kind of thing. Um, uh, if we go down to Neoform, uh, you know, it's a it's a really good creature to sacrifice. You can sacrifice your uh, O3 there, go put in Fibblethip into play. Fibblethip draws you a couple of cards. Um, you know, like those, those cards put together have some really good synergy. Um, and that's kind of like where I'm seeing seeing an Arboreal Grazer seeing play. Um, I don't think it's great for Nexus. Like, <clears throat> I think like those kind of decks, they'll just want to be you know, like, they got their growth spirals. That's probably good enough. Um, maybe though, maybe Nexus just plays it as a blocker. And because they, they have enough card draw that they can use like, you know, they can replace their, their lands uh also yeah maybe, maybe nexus plays as a, as a blocker i'm not sure like their decks are already like pretty good i'm not sure if like arboreal grazer is better than anything in their deck um i think i think like neoform kind of deck is like really where you're you're looking at arboreal grazer as like like prime speaker vanifar and neoform like those 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 kind of cards um uh, this is on this is on Wizards website. This is their card gallery on their website. Um, yeah, and yeah, you can pump it up with the one one counters with like with the Ajani, um, also, and you know you can start attacking with it. it does not have defender. Uh, <clears throat> yes, you are crazy for thinking this is better than Land War Elf. <laughs> yes, that is crazy. Um, it is not better than Land War Elf. Uh, it has good synergy with Tatiova. Yeah, that's true. Get that extra land into play. Draw a card, gain a life. So I'm thinking this is like a, a D plus. I think like sometimes you'll kind of see it in standard, a little bit underpowered. Um, but you know, it could it could be a role player in some decks. 
Um, so how do plus one plus one tokens work on Gideon and Blackblade? Uh, the the one one counters just stay on there, and he like he'll be a five five on your turn with a one one counter, and then on on your opponent's turn, it's just a planeswalker that has the one one counter still on it. It doesn't the one one counter doesn't go anywhere because Gideon Blackblade doesn't leave the battlefield or anything, so it works just fine. So why is Land War better than Grazer? Because Land War like adds an extra mana all of the time. Like you can you will continue to hit your land drops. Um, so like basically, okay, you play Grazer, you play an extra land from your hand. So then on turn two, you play another land and you have three lands now. If you play Land War Elf on turn two, you have three lands now. You, you still have the same amount of mana. The thing is, is on like turn four, turn five, uh, when you hit your fourth or fifth land drop, like Land War Elf still adds mana, but you stop drawing lands and you stop hitting land drops. So like that, you stop hitting land drops an extra turn earlier with the Grazer. So like at, at some point on like, you know, turn four or turn five, if you don't have like that extra land to play anymore, you now suddenly have the same amount of mana you would have had otherwise with without the Grazer. Um, yes, if Land Werewolf dies, it, you know, it, of course, you know, you don't get that extra mana. Um, but Grazer, all it does is put one land from your, you know, it, it, it gives you that extra land drop, but it doesn't like get you the extra mana overall, basically. Um, and plus if you, draw, if you draw the Grazer later, you know, like it, it's not going to add mana. It's just going to be the O3 reach, that kind of thing. Could you play this and Land War Elf? Yeah, yeah, you could. You could. You you would definitely want to play a lot of lands with our 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 Boreal Grazer. You definitely want to have a lot of lands in play, or not just sorry, not in play, but just in your deck because you want to have like the extra lands from your hand. Um, you know, if you have a two land hand, for example, which that's pretty pretty common in standard. Think about how many times you've kept like two like two land Land War Elf. Think of how many times you keep that. If you have two land with a, a Boreal Grazer. Sure, like turn one, you play your Grazer, you play your second land. Great. Turn two, what if you don't draw a land? You just don't have a land drop. Like you, so you would have just played that land anyway. It just, you know, didn't actually do anything for you. So, you know, you have to like kind of consider that. Um, and then, yeah, you draw it on like turn four. And like, you know, you're, if you're, if you're ever like stuck on lands and you're kind of like low on your land count, Grazer is just not going to be doing anything for you, basically. It is very good on turn one, uh, and especially it's very good when you have like four or five lands at hand. Like that's when it's that's when it's the best. Um, but like I was saying before, I could see it in a neo form deck. Get an extra land out, sacrifice it to to neo form. Uh, go get Fibblethip. Fibblethip draws two cards whenever it enters. That that could be a combination there. All right, Arlen, voice of the pack is our next card for green green for a seven loyalty planeswalker that's a lot of loyalty but it is six mana um, each creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it and then minus two is create a two two but it will it it will enter with an additional one one counter so basically a three three green wolf creature token making a two two with a one one counter on it is just better than making a three three because of like the proliferate stuff so that does kind of work there. But I'm not expecting six mana Arlen to see any play when we have cards like six mana Vraska, six mana uh, Liliana, all that kind of stuff. This is just a limited card. I, I, I don't even think this is like a, a fringe card, honestly. I don't, yeah. If, if somebody wants to make a, a, a wolf tribal deck, I guess, I guess this could be like. I guess this could be like Mirror March, basically. The you want to build a janky wolf tribal deck and have Arlen in it. All right, so I guess it could be a D for that. For yeah, for so for wolf tribal. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, Arlen's Wolf, two and a green, three, two. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So if you want to put this in your Wolf Tribal deck, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, that's that's a limited card. 
All right, this one's an interesting one. Awakening of Vitu Ghazi. Three green green instant. Put nine one one counters on target land you control. It becomes a legendary zero zero elemental creature with haste named Vitu Ghazi. It's still a land. What do y'all want to do with Awakening of Vitu Ghazi? Here. Um, you know, it is a, a 9 9 haste creature, instant speed kind of thing. You need six mana if you want to, like, put your, your counters on another creature, or sorry, on a land and then attack with that land. So if you if you you need six mana for that, um, you can do it like your opponent's end step also or during combat. Um, is this is this the card to make Simic Ascendancy a thing? Like where you need twenty counters on your your permanents on your creatures? Like Vitu Gazi gets you nine of it right there. They do just stack well, right? Like you can just put you can just put the other nine on the same on the same land again, right? You can put nine and then nine on the same land and have eighteen right there. Now that nine nine creature is just a creature. It can get chump blocked. It doesn't have trample, doesn't have any kind of evasion at all. It is just a, a nine nine creature. So would you play a six mana nine nine flash? This is worse than a six mana nine nine flash because you do put the the counters on a land, so you you are risking a land. You know, a, you know if they mortify your creature, you're they're destroying a land also, and that that really hurts in standard. We've seen like how. Um, uh, Assassin's Trophy, how Assassin's Trophy gives your opponent a land, how that's, you know, a really big deal in standard. Losing a land is a really big deal in standard also. So that's that's the huge downside to this thing. Yeah, so you can kind of think of it as six mana, nine, nine flash that has the claws sacrifice a land kind of thing. Because uh, then because you're not using that land as a land anymore if you're like attacking and blocking with it. Um so that's that's a huge downside. Like that that clause of like getting rid of one of your lands. Um, there is yeah, you can pair it with Tamik. Um right, with Tamik says that they can't target your lands anymore. So you you could pair it there, but of course they can just kill your Tamik and then kill your awakening. Of Vitugaza, or just use a Wrath effect. Um, I kind of feel like <clears throat> Wilderness Reclamation with Awakening. I mean, it does does like untap your lands and then give you the mana for it. Um, I don't think it's like what like I don't think a a Nexus deck really wants this, but maybe that maybe they want it post sideboard when you take out your removal, you just make a nine nine kind of thing. Um, <laughs> well, you can't, there's no ink moth nexuses in standard to put it on. So <clears throat> yeah, you, uh, Simic Ascendancy, Hadana's Climb with this thing. Yeah. I mean, Hadana's Climb with this thing, you know, if you end step awakening on a land, you untap, play Hadana's Climb, put another counter on it, make it a 10 and then Hadana's Climb just makes it 20 in the air you can you can certainly kill people and you know they tap out for kaya's wrath or whatever and then you're and you don't you know you don't have to have six man at that that time you only need five um <clears throat> so that could be kind of cool like you know you you play like your other creatures and you're like hadana's climb deck and they kaya's wrath your board when you went first so you, it's your turn five and yeah, you just awakening a land, end step, untap, play Hadana's Climb. I don't know. I've, I'm going with D on this card. Uh, would we need an extra land? Dang it. 
for casting and, and activating climb. Hmm. Well, uh, you also have Mox Amber. <laughs> no. I'm going with D with this card. I think this is like a a janky build around card kind of thing. I don't I don't really see this having a big impact in standard. Um So what happens if you do this on mobilized district? Then when you activate mobilized district, it, it mobilized district becomes a 3/3. Three, three. And then this also, and then it also has nine one one counters on it, so it, it would be a twelve twelve. So yeah, you'd get you'd get a three three with nine counters. Yeah. So I'm going. I'm rating Awakening of Itugazi a D. Uh, some janky build around, but it, it does have like some sweet potential, some sweet blowout potential, some really good story potential of like, oh man, I got to cast this end step Awakening of Itugazi, and you know all this kind of stuff. Band together, two and a green instant, up to two target creatures you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature. That's So they both deal damage just to one creature, and it is instant speed. So like if you're playing like a mono green deck w with a lot of creatures and you need removal, this could be... Um, this could be your thing because it is, you know, like instant speed and stuff. Uh, probably a really good limited card, yeah. Um, so, yeah. This is, you said this is the closest thing to real mono green removal you've seen. It's, it's pretty close to real mono green removal. Um, it's. Yeah, like there there was like the the two mana instant speed fight, but like this though that other creature doesn't deal damage to your creatures, right? So your creatures are safe. I could see this like if you're playing a mono green deck that needs removal, this this could see play. Um Correct, yes, you can use this a second awakening on the same land and make it an eighteen eighteen, yes. Yeah. Um yeah, if your Boris Heroic deck is Naya then this is amazing with feather. I see. I can see that this this could be amazing with feather. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. Um. All right, so I'm gonna go like a C minus, maybe a or a D plus. You know, I guess probably a D plus. A card you'll see sometimes. Yeah, a card that you'll sometimes see in standard but underpowered. That's like this card. Like we'll go like a D plus. All right, Bloom Hulk three and a green four four. When it enters the battlefield, proliferate. That's a limited card. Bond of Flourishing one green. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. You gain three life. Man, I like this card so much. This is like exactly like the exactly the type of decks I like to play. Would love to play Bond of Flourishing. I still just don't know if it's good enough. I don't know. Like, do you want to spend two mana to anticipate sorcery speed? Anticipate uh, that you have to. It has to be a permanent card that you take, and you also have to reveal the card. So then your opponent like it. That is kind of a that is a a strike against it. Your opponent does get to kind of play around the card then and for that you get to gain three life um you know i'm like the you think it's terrible compared to revitalize you'd rather just like gain three life draw a card with revitalize instead of like kind of searching it like depends on like how many i guess like uh like creatures with um, ETB effects that you want to like find, you know, if you want to try to help, try to help find a specific creature kind of thing. Uh, but it does like take a slot. Like the more cards like this you have in your deck, the worse they are. Cause like, you know, whenever you cast Bond of Flourishing, if there's another Bond of Flourishing there, like that's one less card kind of thing. Um, It just doesn't dig very deep for two mana. I don't know. It's the I like 
I really like the card, and it's the kind of card that you would think that I would love to put in my decks, but then it's also like, do I really want this in my deck? Like, on turn two, I'd rather be casting, like, Incubation Druid most of the time. This is, it's perfect for, in the very late game, whenever you just have a bunch of mana and you don't have any cards in hand, it's a great card to draw, where you get to look at the next three cards to look for your Vivian or your Hydroid Crisis kind of thing. But it's not really something you want to be doing. It's not like, you don't want to be spending your early turns doing this. You'd rather be spending your early turns... Um, adding on to the battlefield and so because of that I don't think it will see very much play adventurous impulse is similar but it doesn't take lands right or maybe it does it doesn't get planeswalkers where this does yeah so it doesn't gain three life I'm going I'm going with just a limited card but I, I wish I could play it but I just don't think it's quite good enough yeah so impulse is land creature so this is land so you get Gain three life plus get Planeswalker for the most, you know, obviously more things, but just like for like the most part for like the deck that you want to play it in for an extra mana. And I don't, I don't love it. I don't really love Adventurous Impulse either. So going with just a limited. Vitugazi with Narset's Reversal. Yeah, you can you can put your Vitugazi back in your hand with the Narset's Reversal. Get to copy it there. All right, Centaur, Centaur Nurturer, three and a green, two, four. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Add one man of any color. Um, no, I don't think Simic Reclamation plays uh, Bond of Flourishing, no. So, th this I wish this was three mana, basically. Three mana, two, four with that and gain three life you know we're talking maybe but four mana that's a lot for this kind of thing i think that's another limited card i think the the best chance i have at playing like bond of flourishing centaur nurture um are is with the bolus of citadel how we talked about uh whenever we're going over the black cards um if we're playing a bolus citadel deck where we need a lot of life gain and like bolus citadel or sorry uh bond of flourishing can like help you find your bolus of citadel I think at like that point, maybe we can play those those two cards in like the Citadel deck, because then also the the mana creature adding mana of any color is really nice in the black black black, uh, deck. So I think that's like where I could see myself playing both Bond of Flourishing and Centaur Nurture, like maybe you know, but but probably not. I mean we we have there's like Gift of Paradise right now that's gain three life, add one mana of any color kind of thing. Uh, that helps fix your mana, and it costs three instead of four. You don't get the two four body, but bond of flourishing could be nice with citadel. I'm not. I'm not so sure about citadel, or sorry, of nurture. That's probably just a limited card. Challenger troll four and a green six five. Each creature you control with power four or greater can't be blocked by more than one creature. That's just a limited card. That's true. Gift of Paradise does not have summoning sickness also. Good point. Courage in Crisis, two and a green. Sorcery, put a 1-1 counter on target creature, then proliferate. So you get two 1-1 counters on that creature, plus, you know, proliferating. Um, still just a limited card. Evolution, Evolution Sage, two and a green, three, two. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. I think I I don't know if I'm underrating proliferate. I I could be underrating proliferate, but even evolution sage here just doesn't just seems like a either like one of two things, either just a limited card or a D like a you know a janky build around card if you really want to build like a, a janky proliferate deck. Uh, then you know the evolution sage is is really good there um, for you. But I don't really see this making waves in standard at all. I don't. You know, like you're gonna have to play like a, a lot of planeswalkers and evolution sage also, and then you, you want your sage to stick around. Um Yeah, so your Simic card so you, okay, so if you if you're playing Simic Adapt stuff, so if you're if you adapt your Simic card, which you know, like those mana costs are, are kind of expensive to adapt, but you play your Simic card, you adapt it, and now you have the counters on it. Then after that, then you can have your Evolution Sage, and then your land drop to then proliferate, 
your counters on your Simic Adapt creatures. I, I just feel like I'd rather, at that point in the game, I'd rather just have a better threat than Evolution Sage. Like, you know, it's not like I don't want to be top decking Evolution Sage when after my opponent like kills all my stuff and I don't have anything, and then you just draw this Evolution Sage and you're like, what is this card doing in my deck? Kind of thing. Um, yeah, you do have like even Wild Growth Walker, Jade Light Ranger. I mean, what what in Soul Tie is worse than Evolution Sage? Because I think the answer is nothing by a long ways. Um, not really. So Riot creatures, creatures with Riot. Yeah, I mean, there's so yes, there are things you can proliferate, but I just I don't know. Sure, it makes your crisis a little bigger. Every land drop makes your crisis bigger. It's just like you have to have like, you know, other things in play to make this card and then like this card can make your other things in play. But like, you have to have other other creatures in play with one encounters or planeswalkers and then you have to have and then at that point your evolution sage can make your other things a little bit better if you also have a land drop also. It's just like it's like best case scenario I and mean, worst case scenario, you know, you're trading one for one with your opponent a bunch, which is like what normally happens in standard. And then you're left with this evolution sage that they just ignore because the card doesn't do anything without your other stuff. So they just kill your other stuff and you have like this little three, two. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, finale of De So I'm going with, I'm going with, I guess a D. Uh, it's either F, it's either limited or D, and I, I guess I'm going with D. Uh, janky build around card. All right, finale of devastation. You're liking this this card sway. Um, okay, unbreakable formation, giving all your creatures one one counters, and indestructible. And then you have your sage that proliferates. You play your land afterwards. Aren't you already? Don't you already win with unbreakable formation anyway, though? Isn't like the point of Unbreakable Formation just has you win anyway? All right, so Finale of Devastation. Uh, green, green, X, search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more creatures you control, gain plus X, plus X, and gain haste until end of turn. So the... The if you are able to go X for being ten or more, giving like you know pump up your creatures a bunch and giving them haste, that is huge. So uh, the first the first spot I see this card being seeing play is like Elf Ball. Uh, you know like you can't add a lot of mana with Marwin, so in particular, so like an Elf Ball deck with Marwin and a bunch of mana elves, um, and then like Finale a Devastation here can go get your Marwin if you need it, or it can go get your. Um, uh, end race forerunners or anything like that or you know like that kind of stuff um you know if you're struggling on mana you know you can at at worst you can at least have a three mana land war elf you know at at worst if you're if you're struggling there um that's like you know the the worst case scenario you got three mana land war elf um i i love it with fibblethip yeah with fibblethip you get uh <clears throat> and so you know like like, your Elf Ball deck can certainly be Simic. You know, we've played Simic Elves because you, you just play Hydroid Krasis in your Elf deck because that card is awesome with a ton of mana. So you can have Finale of Devastation also as, like, more um, good good things to do with a lot of mana. Um, Nikia the Old Ways doesn't work with this because uh, Nikia the Old Ways says you cannot cast non-creature spells. So, you, I mean, you can go find Nikia and put it into play, but when you have Nikia and adding a lot of mana, then you can't cast this finale of devastation. Um, but, uh, is that Galta? Did Galta get a spark? I don't, it kind of looks like Galta. Um, yeah, you can go get Ronus for seven mana, get Ronus and overwhelming stampede. Yeah. Just do double the power of everything. Uh, that's, that's certainly a good, good call. Um, and X is 10 or less. You, you can go, you can spend X is 10 and then put Ronus into play and 
your creatures get plus 10 plus 10 plus you double your creatures power also <laughs> you you can do that so maybe that's maybe Ronus is just kind of better than Endray's forerunners actually uh kind of thing um it's gigantosaurus okay Uh, so like that's where I that's where I can kind of see the, the card scene played um, but like we've been talking about like an, a, a blue green neoform Vanifar deck uh, just getting Fibblethip spending four mana put Fibblethip into play draw two like four mana draw two plus get a two two now I guess it's a one one at that point so four mana draw two plus get a one one that's not so bad especially when you have other ways to to sacrifice your one one and do other things with it um like, that's pretty good there. Um, so, like, those are some janky decks. You know, like, those aren't, like, really, you know, like, tier one decks or anything right now. Um, if you put it in an ooze, yeah, it would be it'd be two 12-12s with haste. Yes, if you spent X is 10 and put in Biogenic Ooze. Um, I guess maybe, maybe it's just one, because I guess you have to finish this thing, and then the ooze would make the other token. No, I think Fibblethip's just a 1-1, one, one, right? It's not a 1-3, right? Is it just a 1-1? One, one? So it's pretty versatile, uh, especially if you want to play it in a toolbox deck. You know, do you need to go get Knight of Autumn? You can, you know, you can spend 5 mana on a Knight of Autumn or 4 mana on a uh, Kral Harpooner, which is certainly not a bad deal. Um, you know, you can go, you can spend 6 mana on a Chupacabra, or five mana on a deputy detention, uh, you know, four mana on a kite sail freebooter. You know, you can just you could put it in a, a toolbox deck also. Where n no, it's not great that you're spending extra mana on those things. Like those, like that much mana for those cards doesn't sound great. But it's the options. You know, you have the option of, you know, is is deputy detention awesome here? Is it worth five mana? You know, kind of thing. Um, so all that kind of stuff. So it's it is very very versatile. Um, I think it's kind of a C though, a powerful card that sees play in fringe decks. I think that's where it's at. I don't, I don't know if it's like necessarily like maybe it's a four of in those kind of decks, but maybe not. Um, yeah, you can get Tulsimer, go get Dire Fleet Daredevil. Uh, yeah, like you know, it it can just do so much stuff. Uh, what do you mean by <laughs> aggregate all the scores? But so overall, I think finale devastation going to go ahead and give this a C, a powerful card that we'll see play in fringe decks. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Forced landing. Uh, one energy instant put target creature with flying on the bottom of its owner's library think this is probably worse than plummet i mean if i guess against like against seraph of the scales and rekindling phoenix like things that are like hard to die they don't really die to plummet you can put it at the bottom of their library which i guess that's going to be better than um maybe it's just better than plummet actually maybe instead of destroying just putting it at the bottom of the library is actually better um and yeah the the blue god that has flying um you put that at the bottom yeah, because Kefnet, I think, is the only one that's flying. So not the worst sideboard card. Uh, so yeah, fringe, fringe sideboard card. So, you know, it's kind of like a Collision Colossus, a fringe sideboard card. So that's a C. According to the rating scale. Yeah. Yeah, stops people from getting Krasis with their find finality. Yep, go put it at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, probably has... I agree. It probably has a little less use in this format than Crushing Canopy with how important destroying enchantments are. But I do like, you know, Phoenix, Seraph of the Scales. If those cards get really powerful, or sorry, with sorry, if those cards start seeing a lot of play, you know, if like Seraph of the Scales picks up quite a bit with the white and black god, uh, white the white and black gods, and uh, you know, Free Canopy Phoenix does, you know, put them on the bottom of the library. Yeah, the, the art isn't the best, but oh well. All right, Giant Growth. 
Single G instant target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Classic magic card. We have not seen printed in a while. Um, <laughs> make a big Mowu. That's pretty cool. Is Giant Growth playable these days? It's probably not, right? It's like, I mean, if, again, if that, if your Feather the Redeemed deck is Naya, I guess, maybe. Um, yeah, it's neat with Feather if you have the mana base for it. Um, it is good with Trample Creatures, of course. I mean, I, I definitely see it being played. Like, I think it's, I call this like a D. I definitely see, like, think you'll see this on standard. I think, like, this is going to be like a, a mono green uh, starter deck kind of card where people are jamming this in their mono green starter deck that, like, it's going to get you kind of thing. Um, but, all right, so that's, that's where I'm going with it. D. All right, God Eternal Ronus. Three GG, five five Death Touch. Whenever God Eternal Ronus enters the battlefield, double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn, and those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. And then whenever God Eternal Ronus dies or is put into exile, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. All right. What do y'all think of God Eternal Ronus? Is this is this an A? It's probably not like, you know, an A, like a format staple among multiple decks. Maybe. I mean, it's it's not like a four of kind of thing. It's likely not like a four of, but it's, it's certainly really good. We've talked about how it's really good with, with Ilharg the Raised Boar. Um, you know, we've talked about that. It's... You know, it's a good card to find with Finale of Devastation if you want. It's it's a good uh, Vanifar thing to be able to go find. Um, it doesn't do anything on an empty board. It's just a 5-5 Death Touch on an empty board. And so that is that is kind of a problem. Because, like, think about, like, um, hey, it's still not bad, Mitchin. Went 3-1 went with Azorius Aggro. That's pretty good. Um, very good. Yeah, good job. We do think about, like, like all the different Biogenic Ooze decks that I've been playing and how many times we play Biogenic Ooze on an empty battlefield. It just happens all the time with, you know, how much removal and interaction there is in standard. And so at that point, you are just kind of playing a five mana, five, five death touch, which is fine, but it's not, that's not spectacular. So it does, it, it really does want um, a battlefield to already be there to, to do stuff. Um, it does not double the power of itself. It doubles the power of each other creature. So if you, if you have, you know, a way to give it haste with like riot, it's not doubling itself. You're not attacking for 10 kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I feel like, hmm, maybe a, Definitely thinking like a B. That's yeah, I'm kind of feeling like a B here for God Eternal Ronus. Not so great on its own, but I think it could work pretty well. In, I, I think it's gonna be a card in the Gruel deck. Um I don't think it's like a four of kind of thing. But I think it's a, a good card in the Gruel deck. Um It is pretty awesome with Steel Leaf, right? Make it Steel Leaf super big. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think B is pretty legit. Yeah, Ronus is a B. All right, Ronus B. So we have we have Ronus. So as far as the the different uh, God Eternals go, we had Ilharg, and and I guess Ilharg was the best one at A minus. Um, Kefnet and Oketra were B pluses. Ronus B and Bantu B minus. Yeah, I think this is a good Gruel card. I think that's where Ronas fits in, is, is with Gruel. All right, Zing Yanggu. How do, how do I pronounce this? Zeng? Jing? 
Jang? Jiang? I guess I've never tried to pronounce this before. Uh, Yang Yangu? Ying? Jank? <laughs> Jiang. So Jiang Yangu. All right, Jiang Yangu. That sounds like a pronunciation that could be correct. All right, Wildcrafter. Two and a green for a Planeswalker. Three loyalty. Each creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it has tap, add one mana of any color, and also has minus one, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Definitely the best part of this card is uh, Mowu in the back. Mowu is adorable over here. That That is awesome. Yeah. The doggo is an A. Mo Mowu gets an A. Um, as far as the card, uh, you're looking at uh, kind of like a similar card to uh, Song of Fraley's kind of thing. Like, can you make like a bunch of like creature tokens and stuff? And then can you can you get, or like a bunch of creatures, can you get a bunch of 1-1 counters on your creatures so they can add one mana? I think the best thing... So I'm not really, yeah, I'm not really seeing that kind of deck. I think the best thing that that this Planeswalker can do though is I think it does work really well with the two adapt the two adapt two drops. I think that's what it does. I think it's I think it's great with Growth Chamber Guardian, um, and with Incubation Druid. You know, like if you play Incubation on turn two, you play this on turn three. You put a counter on Incubation Druid. And then your Incubation Druid adds three mana again, so then you can do something else also um, on turn three as well. So, like, it does work. It does work with... I think those are, like, where, where it's the best. And Growth Chamber Guardian, of course, you know, you, you go find your Growth Chamber Guardian, uh, go grab a new one, play it, put a counter on it, go grab another one kind of thing. Um, Yeah, um, a Johnny, a Johnny is a planeswalker that gives a counter on each creature you control. Yeah, at four loyalty, and a, and a Johnny giving your creatures vigilance also also gaining a bunch of life, having more loyalty. It's probably just better <laughs> than. Uh, where's our card? Then our Marwu, or yeah, Unbreakable Formation. Yeah, Luxodon. Uh, the first ability is good with Krasis. Yeah, the first yeah that having um, having a bunch of those creatures with with one one counters that can and then being able to add a lot of mana. That's how you know you can use that for Krasis. You can use that for Finale of Devastation. Can you play like this uh, in like the Elf Ball deck? Try to have like a bunch of like mana elves and like this also can help you with with your mana elves. Add more mana. Get a bunch of mana for Finale of Devastation. Can that work? Maybe. Uh, I don't think that this would be very good in Sultai. No, I, I don't really think you need this in Sultai. Um, I don't think. So I'm going with a D. I think it's you know kind of a janky build around card. That sounds about right. Let's go with a D for Wildcrafter. All right, Kral Stinger, two and a green, two two Death Touch. Um, just three mana, two two Death Touch. I think that's just a limited card. This could be a thing in Merfolk. I could see that. I guess it could be a thing in Merfolk. Yeah, it's a it's a card you could see sometimes. So yeah, a D is a pretty good rating there. <clears throat> uh, Crunch Wrangler one in one in a green at two one trample. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on it. Again. Uh, just a just a limited card here. Google Translate pronounced Jing, or pronounced this part as C. So this is C, or T S I, C. Um. Yeah, that didn't that didn't seem like a the correct translation. 
That doesn't seem right. All right, Mowu Loyal Champion, A for Doggo, A for Art, A for, you know, loyal, good, loyal boy. Um, yeah, y'all are saying A plus, there, A plus, S tier. Three in a G, three, three, trample vigilance. If one or more loyalty counters would be put on Mowu loyal champion, put that many plus one, one, one counters are, or that many plus one, one, one counters are put on it instead. So you think this is similar to Gatebreaker Ram could be playable. I think it's a lot, a lot less powerful than Gatebreaker Ram, unfortunately. Um, this is unfor Mo is just a limited card, just getting the limited rating, but still a plus. Also, uh, this is this is not a a B card. This is not a. I don't think this is a B rating. No, I don't, I don't think this is a. I don't think this card will see standard play. Unfortunately, it could go in the Simic Ascendancy deck. All right, you want to? Yeah, you want to put it in the Simic Ascendancy deck and get a bunch of counters on it. All right, yeah, okay. I guess that could be a thing. Um, I guess I could. <clears throat> So D for Doggo. <laughs> there you go. All right, New Horizons, two in a green. And I can't read this card because Hawkeye is sitting in front of the computer. Come here. Thank you. All right, uh, this is Enchantment Aura. Enchant Land, whenever New Horizons enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. And Enchant Land has tap, add two mana of any one color. This is a reprint, yes. Um, this is just basically, this is, um, you don't get the three life from gift to paradise. The one one counter is almost always worse than the three life. The place like where this could be is if you're ramping hard and you have incubation druid. If you got incubation druid on two, um, you can go new horizons on three. You put your counter on, on your incubation druid and then play something else on three. Play your ying, zing, yan, ju. And I'll play your wild crafter. There you go. Um, but for the most part, this would usually be worse than gift to paradise. But if you have like the creature, if you have a, a heavy creature deck, you won't put gift to paradise in a creature deck. Uh, then this can be a better option for you there. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, limited though, because I don't think that we'll see new horizons being played, but yeah, you can. So on on turn three, you could play New Horizons, pump Incubation Druid, and play Gift of Paradise, and then turn four, uh, you'd have four lands, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. You'd have nine mana on turn four. It's a lot of mana on turn four. It does turn on the five colors for Incubation too. So if you like, if you were playing an Incubation Druid plus Paradise Druid deck you know you want to put a counter on your paradise druid and also if you're playing a five color deck so if you're if you're playing like a green based and okay so maybe i should go with the d because i could certainly do this but if you're playing a green based niv mizza deck you know maybe you know maybe like that helps you out there <laughs> you know if you need you need your paradise druid to add mana of any color also to help help cast your uh niv mizza also that kind of thing. All right, Nissa, who shakes the world, three GG, five loyalty. Whenever you tap a forest for mana, add an additional G. Plus one. Put three one one counters on up to one at target non creature land you control. Untap it. It becomes a zero zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste. That's still a land. Minus eight, you get an emblem with lands you control, have indestructible, search your library for any number of forest cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. <laughs> Nissa, whose text box is not big enough, basically. Okay, 
So a few things about Nissa. Uh, first, the pl you know you're when you're playing it, you're doing the plus one, right? And the plus one puts putting three counters on a land isn't always a good thing. Like when you're playing against a deck that's has a lot of removal, that's playing you know Kaiserath, Mortifies, that kind of stuff. Throwing your lands out there to die into like Kaiserath is not good. Uh, that's that's not something that you want. Um, so there is some real downside to the, the, the tick up, you know, when, when your opponent's playing sweepers, however, that, that first ability is amazing. Having all of your forests add an additional green mana, that is very, very powerful. You know, if you're going with hydroid crisis, you'll be able to get tons of mana for hydroid crisis. That's a really big deal. Also how we are just talking about. Uh, this finale of devastation being able, you know, if you're playing Elf Ball with Nissa, where you're trying to add a whole lot of mana, finale of devastation, uh, this is a way to cast it. You know, like this, this is awesome with that. Yeah, because you don't, you don't have to exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. It's up to one, uh, up to one target non-creature land. So you don't actually have to with that. But basically, the the main reason to play Nissa, who shakes the world, I think, is this top ability of just. It's just a, a five loyalty planeswalker that you may not actually do the the plus one with stuff. You know, you may just plus one and not actually choose any lands, and just you know, kind of plus one and not choose any land and just get loyalty. But this first ability is amazing. Uh, there's so many ways to use all that extra mana in standard, and it is any forest, not just basic forest. So breeding pool adds an extra green mana, and you can tap. Breeding pool for blue, and then add a green mana. Also, for example, Overgrown Tomb adds an extra green, um, and so on. So, so that's <clears throat> that's awesome. So I, I feel like Nissa is a really good in, in Elf Ball deck. Make a lot of mana, use it on the Finale of Devastation kind of thing. If if we're talking about Jank, uh, uh, if you want to play Simic Ascendancy. And you want to get some more counters? I mean, hey, plus one, you get three one one counters. That's that's three counters for your Simic Ascendancy deck. You know, each each plus activation gets you three counters. <laughs> so there you go. If you want your jank Simic Ascendancy deck. Um Yeah, Wilderness Wilderness Reclamation is definitely a, a better card than Nissa, I think. Like Wilderness Reclamation is is really busted. Nissa is similar, but probably worse overall. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not good enough to see played, basically. Um, uh, so yeah, March of the Multitudes. That's another good good card that you can add. You know, add a whole lot of mana. Get March of, March of the Multitudes, instant speed. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, Reclamation is so busted that if you're just comparable, you're you're probably pretty good. Uh, Yeah, you, you can maybe have both. You can have your Nissa and your Wilderness Reclamation deck, so your forest had multiple green mana. I mean, you can. So, is Nissa like going to be good enough for like a highly played archetype? Like these are all just kind of fringe stuff that we're like talking about here. You know, like talking about like Elf Ball and and things like that. Um, so the plus one says put. Wait, so the plus one says put counters on a non-creature land and Simic Ascendancy asks for you to add plus one, plus one counters to a creature to get charge counters on it. Well, Simic Ascendancy just says if you have like 20 counters on creatures you control, you win the game, right? Doesn't it say that? Do I do I not know what Simic Ascendancy does? I mean, I, I may not. Um... Yeah, so you could you could try this in a Nexus deck to have like your lands as like an alternate win con kind of thing. Oh, Ascendancy needs twenty. I guess I don't really know what Simic Ascendancy does. I guess I guess I don't know what that card does. Never mind. I guess I had that card wrong. Simic Ascendancy gets charge counters whenever you put one one counters on a creature. Oh, never mind. Uh, <clears throat> besides that. Um, 
so yeah, Nissa, I think I think this is kind of another definition of a C. A, it's a powerful card. It can see some play in some fringe archetypes. Um, it could go in the Nexus deck as your win con. You know, like if you don't don't want to play other win cons, you know, you don't like in your Simic Nexus deck, you can have Nissa as your win con to be able to make you know your lands as, as your uh, things that win. Okay, so the the nine yeah, so the Vitugazi doesn't work with Simic Ascendancy um thing. I I did guess I was wrong of like I thought you know, I I just didn't know what Simic Ascendancy did. I guess I had it wrong. I I was thinking you just needed twenty counters on creatures in general. Alright, uh Nissa's Triumph, Green Green Sorcery, search your library for up to two basic forest cards. Uh, if you control Anissa Planeswalker instead, search your library for up to three land cards. Reveal those cards and put them into your hand. So you get any three land cards you want. You want Field of Ruin. You want Arch of Araska, You want Blast Zone. Any three land cards you want. If you have Anissa Planeswalker out, you get to go put them into your hand. That is pretty awesome. Nissa Triumph works really well with ways to play extra land cards from your hand. So Wayward Swordtooth, perfect with Nissa's Triumph because Wayward Swordtooth, you know, usually kind of, you just run out of lands in your hand to actually play. But with Nissa's, Nissa's Triumph, is perfect with it where you go get more lands in your hand, put them, put them into play, do things with it. You can get extra lands for your Arboreal Grazer as well if you want. Uh, yeah, Growth Spiral. Yep. Um, yeah, there's the, the new Destroy Creature. Go put an extra land. That one that one just goes and puts one into play. Um, that just shuffles your library and goes, yeah, and goes find it and puts into play. But, um, yeah, so Nissa's Triumph, it can, it can be a, a fringe card that sees some, sees some play in, in some of these, like, these fringe kind of decks. But it is, like... If you have the Nissa Planeswalker out, that is really powerful. Like, I mean, obviously that's 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 basically impossible in modern to get that clause. <clears throat> but think of how good this card with that clause would be in modern, where you can just go put, uh, Urza, you know, Urza's Power Plant, Urza's Tower, and Urza's Mine into your hand, or go put Valica, Valica, Valica into your hand. I don't know. That seems pretty sweet, but. Uh, Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's basically impossible to do. But yeah, Blast Zone is the big thing uh, in standard, probably like like Blast Zone, Arch of Araska. If you're you know if you get a lot of extra mana, you want Arch of Araska to draw more cards, kind of thing. Um... Hey, Frisky Biscuits is sub number ten on the day. Thank you so much, Frisky Biscuits. So that gets our sub goal on the day. Let me scroll down just a little bit. There you go. All right, so hitting that sub goal uh, means that that counts towards our next sub battle stream. So we were, um, so that's that's what I'm doing here. Each time we hit a, a, a sub goal, I decided to do this instead of the sub battle countdown. Um, I think this, this is a little better. So that gets goal number eight out of 15 for doing the next sub battle stream. Of course, tomorrow is going to be a sub battle stream, as you all know, uh, but the next one after that. So each time we hit a 10 sub sub goal, uh, it marks it towards that. So thank you so much, Frisky Biscuits. Yep, getting those hype boats in there. Love it. Uh, Nissa's Triumph, final grade. Yeah, sub battle tomorrow. And it's a 12 hour stream, noon to midnight tomorrow. <clears throat> um final grade um maybe a a c minus no 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 d plus d plus it's just or maybe even a d it's just like a card you'll see sometimes in standard maybe like a d but it, it, i feel like i'm going to be building around this card with wayward sword tooth i'm going to play nissa's triumph wayward sword tooth deck for sure uh but it's going to be pretty janky so yeah, getting if if you're able to get three utility lands, that is amazing. If you you know have enough mana out, get three utility lands, start uh, 
Um, having those lands add a, a bunch of, you have your Nissa in play, so those lands add a ton of mana. So like, you know, go get your Arch of Araska that all your forests add a lot of mana, so you get to draw more cards. Love it. Love it, love it. <laughs> Frisky Biscuits. <laughs> that, is a, that is a fun two words to put together. <clears throat> Yeah, it doesn't have to be that Nissa. That's the only Nissa in standard, though, right? Is there any other Nissas in standard? I think that's the only one. Anyway, uh, Paradise Druid, one green, two one, has hexproof as long as it's untapped, and taps add one mana of any color. I love this card. It's an elf. That's really cool. Um, I love playing mana creatures. I hate when my cre my opponents kill my mana creatures, and this has hexproof um, when you play it until you get to use it, so I love it. Definitely love this card. Um how good is, is it? I, I don't know. We have we have a lot of mana creatures already in standard that are good. Um, I, I'm going to go with a C here for Paradise Druid. Uh, I think it's probably worse than um, Incubation Druid overall. Like Incubation Druid's ability to turn into a 3-5 and add a lot of mana is really good in late games. But I, I love this card. I love how it has hexproof. I love how it, it adds mana of any color. It's you know, real good in my like, Niv-Mizza deck kind of thing. I'm going, to, I'm going to be playing some Paradise Druids. I'm going to find some homes for, homes for this card. Um, it does die to Chain Whirler. That doesn't mean it's unplayable. But it, it does die to Chain Whirler. Um, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, it's Pseudo Sylvan Karyatid. Um, Paradise Druid, cool. Yeah, it's an uncommon. Yeah. All right, plain wide celebration. Five green green for a sorcery where you choose four. And you can choose the same mode more than once. Four. Create a 2 2 citizen creature token that's all colors. Nah, just 2 2, whatever. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Hey, that's that's better than draw a card, right? Like you're, you get to choose whatever creature. You know, it's kind of like find finality. Like, I love it. Take it. Yep. Good. Proliferate. Meh. Uh, meh. Well, you'll see. Maybe you maybe you have a, a battlefield where the proliferate part matters. And you do get to proliferate four times, actually. So I guess if... Hmm. I guess if you just have a Vivian in play, and then you cast this card, you just get to ultimate your Vivian. I guess that's pretty good. Or, yeah, I guess four proliferates probably win the game with just, like, any Planeswalker for the most part. Okay. All right, never mind. Actually, that's that's pretty good too. And then there's also gain 4 life, which gain 4 life is awesome. Do that 4 times, gain 16. That's pretty sweet. So, this I feel like I'm going to play this card in my Nissa's Triumph, Nissa who shakes the world deck. You know, get some proliferate going like if you're Nissaing and putting some 1 1 1 some 3 1 1 counters on your creatures, you can start proliferating those things up, make those a lot bigger. Um <clears throat> it's not really exponential it just adds four counters if you proliferate four times you know like it would turn a three three into a seven seven basically it adds one one counter four times that's what proliferate does um i i like plain white celebration in my bola citadel deck um you know bola citadel how you just start you start uh paying life instead of paying ma mana costs so you pay seven you have to have seven life you pay your seven life and then you gain 16. That's that's a good trade-off. And then with your 16 life, you start casting more cards. So love it there. You know, like that's that's pretty good. Or you can just or you can gain 12 and return a permanent uh, from your graveyard to your hand or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, you can have this with yeah, with new Teferi that can give it flash. Uh, or they can get make your sorcery instant speed and you're playing wilderness reclamation for more mana. You can do that. I'm not gonna be doing that, of course. I don't I don't like my I don't like rec I don't like wilderness reclamations. I don't I don't really play that card. And by I don't really play that card means I've never played that card and don't ever plan on playing that card. Um I guess I have played that card off of a thief of sanity whenever I stole my opponent's wilderness reclamation and Nexus of Fates. I guess I did play it then, but oh well. <clears throat> yeah, so you can gain 12 plus return something like your Nissa that died or anything. I don't know. This card, this card's pretty cool. Definitely really janky, uh, for sure. 
but I'm going to be playing it in, in my janky decks. So I'm going, I'm going D. Uh, a card you maybe some, sometimes see in, in standard, uh, janky build around card kind of thing. Let's go with the D for playing White Celebration, but I like it. Awesome card. This is this is definitely a a card that uh, I will be uh, having fun playing. Yeah, I, I do like how it instantly, like you know, just ultimates your Planeswalkers, your Vivians, your Teferis, uh, that kind of stuff. Your Nicol Bolas, just just uh, ultimate those things immediately. All right, Pollen Bright Druid. One green, one one. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Either put a one one counter on target creature or proliferate. Hmm. So it is an elf, and you know, you can play it in elf decks. There's a lot of other two mana elves these days. Um,. For the at at its floor, it's a two mana two two. You know, it's a grizzly grizzly bear at its floor. At its best, you know, you do get to add some one one counters to a, a few different things, or maybe put another counter on a, a planeswalker, kind of thing. Yeah, Zerf, if I'm streaming tomorrow, yep, definitely do one v one tomorrow. We're doing it's the sub battle day tomorrow, so yeah, tomorrow is the sub battle day. Hey, we got a big donation here from Mitchin. Let's see what this is saying. Let me get this over here. So $30 donation is probably going to be a donation for me to build a deck, which that's always fun. Love building decks. And build a deck and play it here on stream. So let's see what we got. I really want to make a deck that can withstand mid-range and control. I'm not really concerned about aggro. If somehow we can use a little bit of life gain that'd be cool i hate playing against control mostly okay so you want so basically you just want any any deck that beats other mid-range and control decks and especially control it has to be able to beat control most all the time right so that's that's the uh that's what the deck has to be able to do right okay and do you want this deck war the war of the spark style like war of the spark standard deck so it's an anti-control and mid-range deck okay war of the spark style all right so i will I will uh, think about that one later and get you something good. Any any like specific colors you like playing? Okay, you love you love playing black decks. There we go. All right, I can work with that. I can work with that. Um so Paul and Bright Druid back to this card. I feel like it can be a filler card for the right archetype. Um, it can be a a role player kind of thing. I'm not too sure it will be, and I I think I'm I'm going to just give this the limited grade. It does has potential to be a limited. It does have the potential to be a role player in some kind of deck. But I think this is just going to be a, a limited card. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Just proliferates good enough to put it on a two mana one one body. Basically, I, I don't think it's there. Um, <clears throat> I guess it does. Oh, okay, I guess you are. Do you want to spend a card to put a counter on like your incubation druid or your growth chamber guardian? I think you're just not doing that, right? The mono blue guy that draws cards? You mean like the, the benthic biomancer that like draws a card, discard a card? Nah. I don't think we're spending a card to do that, right? But then then you can proliferate them. Alright, so maybe a D. I guess I guess maybe a D here. Um But I 
Yeah, with Incubation Druid, it's it's kind of like free, but then it's you know costs you that card. Yeah, it's it's either a limited card or maybe a D. You know, could maybe see a little bit of play. Does put two counters on Marwin. That's that's the places. Does it fit in the elf deck? You know, does it fit in the elf deck with Incubation Druid and Marwin? I think that's the biggest spot. Like you know, if you're playing our you know our our elf ball deck, do we have room for this? There's already a lot of other good elves. You know, like, would we rather just have Paradise Druid that puts, you know, that's also just a lot better on its own by being able to add mana and also puts a counter on, on our Marwin and stuff? Um, all right, Primordial Worm. This is a limited only card, six mana, seven, six. Um, even with its elite training and single minded devotion, it is still just a limited card. All right, Return to Nature. One in a green instant. Choose one. Destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. So this is just a strict upgrade on Naturalize. Naturalize has been a pretty solid sideboard card in general. And this does the same thing of destroy an artifact or an enchantment, or you can also just exile a card from a graveyard. You know, if you're playing against Arclight Phoenix, you need to exile that Arclight Phoenix from the graveyard. There you go. You have your return to nature. So... Um, yeah, just a, a clean sideboard card here, right? Yeah. So this is, um, is it going to be a very common sideboard card that basically all green decks are, you know, like a lot of green decks are playing return to nature kind of thing. It's gotta be very common for, you know, like cinder vines, for example, where basically every, every green red deck is playing that to try to beat wilderness reclamation. Is it a very common one? So it's a B. I don't know if it's there. And I don't think it's a fringe sideboard card for a C. It's probably between those. So I think it's either a B minus or C plus. I think it's kind of, it's a it's a sideboard card that's that's in between those two, uh, probably where it's like a, a B minus C plus. Hero says it's a C. It's probably closer to a C of like a fringe sideboard card. So I think I think it is. I think it's closer to C than than B. So I would go with C plus then, or if not C plus then C, because I think it is closer to to that. If you're playing green, why would this not be in your sideboard? I don't know. We have Crushing Canopy that destroys enchantments and kills flyers, and that's really important. And so do you need this with that? Like, are artifacts really that big, or is Exile Target card from a graveyard that big? This feels like this is a card that could be bigger after rotation. From the current format that we just had, it wouldn't be as big, I don't think. So I would go, let's, let's just go down to C. All right, we're moving it to C. Fringe sideboard card for now. Spare Spinner, 1G, 1-3, one, Reach. Whenever Snare Spinner blocks a creature with flying, Snare Spinner gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. Limited. Limited. Steady Aim, 1 in a G, instant. Untap target creature, it gets plus 1, plus 4, and gains Reach until end of turn. Uh, yep, that's limited. Storm the Citadel, 4 and a G. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain plus 2, plus 2, and gain. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. So are we, are we playing 4 mana, get plus 2, plus 2 these days? I don't think so. I think this is limited only. I mean, we do have God Eternal Ronus that doubles the power of everything whenever it enters and gives you a 5-5 death touch. But this, I mean, I guess if you're playing against Wilderness Reclamation, like, you know, Simic Nexus, you can, like, destroy all their Reclamations and Escantas, but then they probably just use a Fog. You know, you play this, and then they just, they just play a Fog. So, all right, limited. All right, Thundering Saratok. Four in a G, four five trample. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control gain trample. That's a lot worse than the God Eternal Ronus. So that is a limited card right there. <clears throat> yeah, if they have the multiple reclamations, we probably already lost. All right, Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. Two in a green, legendary planeswalker. Okay, you got to move out of the way so I can read the card. Okay, come on, move out of the way. Come here, come here. Thank you. You may cast creature spells as though they had flash. 
Until your next turn, up to one target creature gains Vigilance and Reach is the plus one ability. And minus two, look at the top three cards of your library, exile one face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as it remains exiled, you may look at the card and you may cast it if it's a creature card. Okay. So a couple of things about this. Uh, so at three mana, you get to plus up to five loyalty immediately. I, I love the first line of this card. The first line of this card is awesome. The first line of the card being, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. That is awesome. Love that. The, the plus one, sure, you give a, a creature vigilance and reach. Hey, Hawkeye donated $30. <laughs> Hawkeye with the donation. All right, so Selesnia Cats. All right, we're going to make a Selesnia Cats deck. Saying, I've been playing your Abzan Cats tribal deck and replacing Twilight Panther with Charm Stray to make it, and we'll make it easy to drop a black. All right, Selesnia Cats. So, Hawkeye, do you want... <laughs> He's looking at me. Uh... Would you like me to play that um, like on Sunday uh, or, you know, or sometime next week, you know, before War of the Spark comes out? Or do you want me to wait until after War of the Spark comes out and have the, the War of the Spark cats in it also? Which, which, one would you, which one would you like me to do to make this Lesnia Cats deck? Um, you know, I can play it. You know, tomorrow we're doing the sub battle stream, so it's not going to be tomorrow. But we can play it Sunday or next week, or um, okay. So Hawkeye says, wait till after, so we can get Charm Stray. So then, all right. So then after war. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So Vivian gives you Wilderness Reclamation Hydroid Crisis. Yeah, this is that's insane. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, you can have Vivian, Wilderness Reclamation, Hydroid Crisis, because your creature spells have Flash. That is awesome. Giving a creature Vigilance is pretty nice because you, you allow the creature to be able to block for v Vivian. Like, that's really good. The big thing I'm, I'm concerned about here with this Vivian is, honestly, the minus two. Three cards is not very many. You're going to whiff on that minus two quite a bit. And, you know, like, you're not going to have a creature in your top three all the time. Like, that's going to be... a like, that's not a guaranteed, you know, you get a creature kind of thing. I think that's that's something that people may be underestimating is how much you actually miss with this minus two. Especially if you're playing, like, Wilderness Reclamation in your deck. You know, the more non-creatures you're playing in your deck, you know, if you're playing, like, other Vivian, five mana Vivian, and so on. Um, well, right. You, you can exile... Yeah, you exile any card. You exile one card face down, but you can only cast that card if it's a creature card. Um, otherwise it's just, otherwise it's just a bluff. Yeah. You just, otherwise, yeah, you're just exile one of the cards. If it's not a creature, you can't do anything with it. So it's just, it's just sitting there and they may think of like, whatever they're like, Oh, what are you going to flash in here? Kind of thing here. Um, yeah, it could be good with the new gods and like basically a creature only deck. Uh, it is, you know, it is nice with a uh, wilderness reclamation if you want to do that of untapping your lands so that you can cast more creatures kind of thing. Um, yeah, you, you don't have to minus two. I mean, you just plus one, give your creatures vigilance and reach. You know, is that is that really that great, giving your creature vigilance and reach? Not really, but giving your creature spells flash, that's awesome. All your all your creature spells having flash is awesome. So yeah, Simic Stompy, uh, really good. And yeah, it is only a three mana investment. So you know, like you're not you're not actually spending very much. And it starts out with a good amount of loyalty, but then the minus two can hit. You know, like if if you're, it's kind of like Domri. Um, Domri, how Domri looks at four cards, and you take you can take two. It's like that's not a great percentage to get two two creatures with Domri. But sometimes you just don't have anything else. You might as well just minus. You know, kind of thing. Um. So I could see this being, yeah, maybe like a, a, a B defining card in a singular highly played deck or a role play, just probably just like a role player that sees play among multiple decks. That sounds like, like Vivian, a role player that sees play among multiple decks. I don't think maybe like B plus, 
Um, I wish the plus ability on Vivian was better. It's it's kind of it kind of reminds me of compare Vivian to Rhythm of the Wild. Rhythm of the Wild being three mana enchantment gives your creatures riot, which you know either another one one counter or haste, and also makes all your creatures not be able to be countered. This is kind of like that, where it's like three mana. It's not an enchantment; it's a planeswalker, but your creatures have flash now, so that's kind of like not countered, or that that's kind of like haste. Um, and then yeah, the plus one. It it will do things at times, but not not always. Um, but like there's there's times like the reach could certainly help you out and everything like that. And there's times your minus two can get you a, a card. Um. So is this, yeah, so this does give reach and vigilance to a, a creature. And you can play your other ones like Flash. Is this appreciably better than Rhythm of the Wild? Maybe. But I feel like it's it's kind of similar power level. Um, the minus two does work really well with the gods. Like anytime one of your gods dies in like combat when you're attacking with your god and they block it to kill it it goes back then you can minus two post combat go grab it again uh yeah i'm i'm gonna go with b plus let's go with b plus with vivian i i like it i, th I think it is probably better than rhythm of the wild but you know i just wanted to kind of compare it to something else there um Yeah, let's go to B+. Plus. All right, Vivian's Arcbow. This one, yeah, this one just... You're correct. Era, th this Arcbow here needs to be talked about a little bit here, right? <clears throat> Ox says we need to call this Lil Vivian. Lil Vivian. What? How about just Lil Vivi? Right? Like, this should just be Lil Vivi. Yeah, that's that's her rapper name, Lil Vivi. Or just Lil Viv. Just Lil Viv. All right, we'll go Lil Viv. All right, Vivian's Arcbow. 1G for a legendary artifact. Pay X generic mana and tap it and discard a card. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may put a creature card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. All right. So this card is is something else. Let's let's start talking about like our, our different CMCs here. For like like how much we're gonna pay. Like let's say we're paying three mana. Like right, Vivian Zark Bow costs two. Let's say we pay three. So we pay three mana, we tap, we discard an extra card, like an extra land card, for for example. We get to look at three cards, and then we need to put a creature card with CMC three or less from among them onto the battlefield. So I already talking about how it's kind of difficult to actually hit a creature with just three cards, like sometimes, like it's not very guaranteed. So this you'd have to hit a creature with, with the three cards, and that and it would also have to cost three or less. I think you could certainly whiff a lot at three there and you're also discarding a card to, for that price um so frisky biscuit says it's 95 percent hit rate if you're paying 30 creatures and x equals four so you'd have to have 30 creatures that all cost four or less right because you can't so like it doesn't hit gods at x equals four right like if you're, if you're playing like ronis and and uh ilharg for example you're not hitting one of those like those wouldn't count so you'd have to have 30 other cre like and are you gonna have 30 creatures and are, are you gonna have like like how are you gonna have like basically how how are we having 30 creatures in our deck with you know like 24 lands and the arc bow and we probably want cards like vivian or domri um you know and stuff and it's hard to have that many creatures kind of thing anyway um yeah, I feel like 
I, I think Shalab is, is kind of like where we're at. I think I think Elf Ball is, is where I'm at with this. You know, Elf Ball where you have a whole lot of mana creatures, so you can get a lot of mana. Uh, you can discard your extra lands because you already have a lot of extra mana. And then um, and you have a lot of mana you can pay. Um, I think it works really well there. Um, it does work with the gods where you know if you can pay five and you know you have a god die you put it back on top you can pay five and discard a card and put your god into play i think that that works really really well um yeah x equals four you can get the blue god you need x equals five for like the other gods uh, and you're you're probably playing this with the other gods i doubt you're playing this with the blue god right like the blue god cares about instants and sorceries i don't think we're playing vivian arc bow and that kind of deck so Famous Gates has that's that's what I'm feeling too, and Sversa said that too. I feel like this is a, a sideboard card against control, really. Like that's that's really where we want, right? Like we want uh against control, we make our threats not counterable, because you know, like we just put our creatures into play. We can do it instant speed, we can do it at, at their end step, we can at their end step we can spend all of our mana, activate our arc bow, uh discard, you know, land or a creature, you know, basically discard a card see what's the best thing we can get that doesn't you know die to their kaya's wrath or whatever that turn untap with our creature and so on um so i think i think that's i think those are like the, the places where we're looking here hey thanks famous gates thanks for that sub thank you so much that's sub number 11 there um, so I think those are the two spots where I'm, I'm really interested in uh, Vivian's Arc Bow, either in Elf Ball as like a two of, as somebody said earlier, like that sounds pretty good, um, where we can try to be a big mana deck kind of thing, where we also have a lot of cheap creatures, or a sideboard card in our like creature deck against control. The kind of problem with the sideboard against control though, is like that's that's really where you want like your your Planeswalkers and stuff too. There's a lot of good planeswalkers in like green plus other colors, like especially for gruel or something like that. There's a lot of good planeswalkers there. Are we going to be like a soul tie deck, like with you know crisis that you know we draw a bunch of cards? Like, are we going to want it like there where we can maybe get you know like uh, our explore creatures that we can find with arc bow or a hostage taker? You know, crisis doesn't really help us putting it in, obviously. Is that kind of deck, you know, Chupacabra, is that kind of deck going to want an arc bow? I, I don't know. Um, maybe it's just like, yeah, just regular good old Golgari, uh, play crafter, Chupacabra, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe where, like, in Golgari like that, you're you're playing uh, like a self-mill Golgari deck, maybe like where you don't mind discarding creature cards also. Like you have a, crave, a grave crawler. Uh, that you you know you just have grave crawlers in your deck. You can discard your grave crawler, uh, hit your opponent, pick your grave crawler back up, kind of thing. Um, or gutter bones. That's the card I'm thinking of. Not grave crawler. It's gutter bones. Is that's uh, old cards is grave crawler. Gutter bones is the card I'm thinking of. Sorry. Yeah. So gutter bones. Um, yeah. Real good there. You can discard your. Yeah. You can discard your squee. Discard your squee and then just recast your squee. Um, yeah, you can get you can get end step thief of sanities, uh, kind of thing. Uh, Mike says the cool thing about the set is there's a lot of directions you can go to solve problems. It'll raise the bar for sideboarding skill. That is true. Like especially like there's a lot of like anti control sideboard cards, right? Because control does look pretty good, but then there's it's like which of these are we playing kind of thing um yeah like this well yeah this, this is this would not yeah arc bow would not go in any as canta deck for sure yeah you're not playing it in in an as canta deck can you imagine like the the one time you have like you have just like a land in hand and your opponent plays whatever devastating spell you know you have le you like you're gonna have lethal they have like Kaya's Wrath and you're just like, you have your four mana and you're like, all right, let's try. And you go four, discard your card, look at your top four and you find Frilled Mystic. You just put your Frilled Mystic into play, like counter that. 
Oh man, getting frilled Mystic off Arcbow, that is gonna be sweet. Oh, find Golgari Fine Broker. That's another good one with Arcbow. Yeah, get your get your Golgari Fine Broker that gets your card back. Uh, that's a good one too. Um, is there a good untap card in standard? Yeah, there. I mean, there's uh, Wilderness Reclamation. If you wanna if you wanna play this with Wilderness Reclamation, you can. Where you can like spend your mana on your turn, and then you can untap your mana and still have the, all your mana up for this ability also. Um. Yeah, so definitely some cool build around stuff with this card, you know? Like is it is it perfect? No. Is it um you know, going to be like are you going to miss a lot? Yeah, you're going to miss a lot with this card and it's going to feel bad. It's not good if you're getting stuck on lands. It's not going to do do very much. Like you need a lot of lands with this card. It it is a pretty it's a pretty heavy mana requirement and you need another card. Usually you're probably thinking, okay, I'm going to ditch my excess lands for my Vivian's Arc Bow. But if you're ditching your excess lands, then you're not having enough lands to be able to, like, activate Arc Bow plus, like, cast, you know, like, whatever other spell you draw for turn kind of thing. Um, so that's that's kind of a problem. Is like there's a, there's a tension there of, like, how many lands do you want in play for your Arc Bow plus, like, your spells kind of thing. Um, so there's... There's a lot going on with this card. A lot going on with the card. Uh, as far as a grade goes, um, yeah, it is high risk, high reward. Yeah, that's that's basically what it is. It's high. It's it's very high risk because you could just be spending a lot of mana and discarding a card and getting nothing for it. <laughs> so there's a high risk. Uh, you know, I'm gonna take my whole turn, spend my mana, discard my card. All right, that's it. Okay, uh, that's it. It is good with Fibblethip. Yeah, you want Fibblethip. Yeah, Fibblethip, uh, you know, costs two mana, so you get to hit it a lot, and you get two cards when it enters. Yeah, this this card is awesome with Fibblethip. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can have your Militia Bugler Fibblethip deck in your band deck. Yeah. Yeah, as a longtime Collected Company player, I'm used to disappointment. <laughs> yeah, same kind of thing. So I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with B. I'm gonna go with a, this card could be a role player that sees play among a lot of decks, or it could be a kind of a common cyborg card against against control with some creature decks, um, or it could there could be like some there could be just like a Vivian's Arcbow archetype, right? Like there could just be like one deck that's like pretty pretty popular. That's like the Arcbow deck. That's like you know the the creature. Um, uh, deck that has like a, a toolboxy creature deck kind of thing um the art is a solid a the art is amazing great art on this card absolutely yeah nikia of the old ways Whew. that's a good one here nikia of the old ways just play some arc bows in the deck but then you you have a ton of mana with nikia oh i love it um yeah i love it there yeah, with, with Vanifar, it's really good with Vanifar, of course. Also, yeah, I Nikki of the Old Ways with Arcbow. That's pretty clutch. I like it. All right, uh, Vivian's Grizzly, 2 and a green, 2-3, Bear Spirit, pay 4. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature or Planeswalker card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. If you don't... Put the card into your hand. Put it at the bottom of your library. I mean, I guess if you want this in your Nikki of the Old Ways deck and you're just playing all creatures and you want your card advantage, you got Vivian's Grizzly here. Uh, if it's a land, put it at the bottom. If it's a creature, draw it kind of thing. But no, this is just a limited card. And uh, <laughs> it seems unbearable. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Ward Scale Crocodile. Four in a G, five three hex proof. Keep on having to put big hex proof, proof creatures in limited. But that's all that is. So, uh, green has some really cool build around cards. Doesn't seem like there's like a lot of like really solid green cards that are going to be like big parts of the format in different decks. It's it really seems like this is a build around color kind of thing. Yeah, you know, we we saw cards like and like they kind of build around together. 
Uh, so Vivian's Arcbow, Vivian, Champion of the Wild, um, Nissa, Who Shakes the World, um, God Eternal Ronus. Those were our cards. Uh, even Finale of Devastation, you know, is a good build around card. Like those are our cards that have a lot of uh, potential here in green, and they all they don't really fit into like decks that are big time decks right now. Basically, is what I'm saying. They're all going to kind of work their way into like their own kind of decks there. Um, so that's what we got. There's green. All right, that's the last of our single colors here for our War of the Spark standard set review. Hope you're enjoying this. If you're watching later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next color.